Hey, welcome back to Dan's Chop Shop. In this episode is going to be the Diecast Graveyards Christmas Challenge, and we're going to do a mashup using this snowmobile and this mod rod. This should get interesting. In these videos, we use sharp mechanical tools, power tools, and chemicals. Nobody under the age of 14 is advised to use these without adult supervision. As you see, I already went ahead and drilled it out. Taking them apart, these are the little pieces we're going to need. I might need this, for sure this. And I got a plan for that little windshield. Also, the base gonna have to get rid of some of that chrome in that interior and the glass I'll probably be cutting out the inner part of that roof panel I'll go ahead and drill and tap and get her in the goop well it's all drilled and tapped we'll see what how good the new stripper works again get in there baby we'll just let her have a little drink and make sure everything gets put in its place and nothing gets mixed up and we'll clean up our mess Well, we've had this in overnight. Might have been overkill, I don't know. But we'll find out. It comes the goo. Get rid of a little of this excess so we don't have a big mess in our... Oh, my goodness. She is peeling off as we speak. Well, and did a little of that. Get rid of this. Now these mats, I just print them off off, off the computer just to make so I don't make a mess on my table. Oh yeah. This, the citrus strip was working so much better than that other stuff ever did. The other stuff it worked great on a couple cars and a couple cars like I said all weekend and it was just nothing. Wasted my time. Oh goodness. This is cleaned up just so pretty. Alright, well, we'll get this all washed up and get back to you. Okay, we give her a wash up and boy did it just Come on, nice. I mean, I got a little bit of in the headlights there, but all in all, pretty good shape. Just clean out those little groovy spots. So we're not going to make no fancy hot rod. Right this is going to be a well, a challenge. It's, it's going to be more of a cartoony looking ride. A mashup. So we'll just give it nice and clean, put the scotch right to it. No spectra flame paint or nothing. I'll take a little bit of scotch bright. All in all, this casting is pretty good shape. I don't think we'll have to do too much filing or anything. We're going to have to be cutting it at one point anyway to uh, mount our track system to. So I'm not going to get too carried away or paint prep at this point. Just getting it nice and cleaned up. See what we got. And 
Heck, I don't even know if I'll be using the post or not yet anyway. So. Alright, well, we'll go figure out what we need to do to cut and mount this system up and make it make a little creature. that problem gone. Well we lost a lot of footage because some dummy didn't put the memory card back in the camera. Well, a little recap what I did. I trimmed off all this stuff on the bottom to kind of fit the bottom. Got a longer screw so that is actually screwed on. I cut off these tabs which I still need to file up. I'm gonna have to wallow out that to fit our skis and It'll wind up looking a little like this guy. Uh, I'm thinking about putting plug wires in it, decorating that engine up. I'm going to have to detail the interior still. But she's coming along nicely. On the back, I'm going to take some of my uh, high heat epoxy putty and shape that up and fill those voids in. And boy, I think it's going to be a cute little cute little critter. Tits on a Ritz cracker. Okay, we've time to attach this metal piece to the plastic base with a little super glue. Then we'll go back behind that with some JB weld. Getting some of these little nooks and crannies here. Make, make it solid as a rock if we can. Using a good the gel base so it doesn't run everywhere. Ah. Tube's just about gone. Good old quick set. I'll let that sit a little bit. We'll mix up some JB Weld. Get all the little nooks and crannies. I'll probably take it apart so I can get in there better. And then we'll have to let that part set and we'll work on the detail in the engine and the interior. Okay, so what I did here, I did spark plug wires. I took a little piece of this tube, such as that, and I took the red wire, because, well, I wanted you to actually be able to see them. And I cut it in four equal lengths, ran it through the tube, had the tube already glued in place right alongside the block, then I glued them in place, run them through the tube, and snipped it underneath. Glued it on both ends. And I think it turned out pretty good. So I took some uh, flat black paint and some thinner. Made me a little bit of wash and just give this a little... Just a little detail. It might not be as good as the store-bought washes, but it does get in a little nooks and crannies. and it's, Help stir it up every now and then, though. Gives it that little age and weathered look. You can wipe off the excess if you don't have to get too much. This gives the bread a little bit of that shiny. So I went ahead and 
got the epoxy out started on it did a little nose cone as you can see built up the radiator shell just a little bit so it's sitting a little bit level over the hood look at them plug wires aren't they nice so we'll let this set up a little bit and we'll start shaping it then we got to tackle these back quarters oh I'm dreading it oh my yeah, so I got bored and I didn't like the really didn't like the shape of that whoa the nose on that it just didn't seem like it flowed so I kind of fabricated this little metal I guess deer guard <laughs> and uh, I, it's not attached yet it's just kind of sitting on there and what a pain in the butt but I think it's gonna gonna belong As you see, I sanded off those little axle supports since we're not really using the front axle. That'll clean up that front end nice. And now, that little cage sits on there like I originally intended it to sit on there. Me likey. So I went ahead and added the putty. It's still really wet. I know it looks blotchy and everything, but it's it's got everything filled up. I just gotta let it set and then do some sand and shape and hope for the best. I've been really sweating this. I really sweat. Well, after trimming the bottom a little bit with a, the razor knife and then sanding on the very bottom, I got my basic shape. Now I gotta let it harden just a little bit longer because it was gumming up my my emery boards and stuff. So we're gonna let it harden a little longer and then we'll get to doing our final sanding. But the basic shape is is there. Well, after a little bit of a battle, we got it shaped up and sanded. I have to do a little more light sanding, but all in all, holy! If I got it, I had it fit on the. The other two bases and let it do a little trimming because <laughs> I get a little thin in places. But all in all, me likey, me likey, and all back together. A little light sanding and probably shoot some paint. Well, last night I had me uh, an epiphany. I'm, I'm <sighs> this exhaust never made sense. It's a six cylinder, straight six cylinder, which I drilled and only put four spark plugs in. But it's got exhaust coming up both sides. And I, you know, I was watching Outlaw Diecast last night and he had the, he did the same thing. When I get rid of this side completely, I'm gonna shorten this side up and I made me a little stack and I am gonna have me a nice little stack exhaust. I mean, nothing says wake the hell up, Santa. You got toys to deliver like good old exhaust right in the face. Oh, and there. Here we are with the new exhaust. Next stop, body shop. Well, there we have it. Everything's painted. Jim Silver's favorite color. Add a little grill guard in the back. Time to assemble. Well, pretty much there we have it. I'm waiting on one little part. I'll tell you what it is. Isn't she a beauty? Oop. Oh well, bah humbug. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs>